Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Football and this is the reaction for the March Day 9 fixtures. UCL Fantasy, what a week, a couple of surprises. Inter Milan beat um, Benfica actually comfortably to be honest, 2-0. Uh, Real Madrid beat Chelsea as expected comfortably 2-0 as well. Actually every like there was a clinch in every single game. AC Milan beating Napoli 1-0. You could tell um, they were missing someone like an awesome man. And also, finally, Man City absolutely thumping by Munich 3-0. That was like a definitely surprises. That was a definite, a definitely a surprising result. I had gone for Man City to score three goals in that game, but I, I was I was going for Bayern Munich to score two or three themselves, not a three nil victory. So that was very very surprising. So in terms of how my team did this week, let's go through every single player and what the, the plans are for match day um, ten, the quarterfinal second leg fixture. So let's get to it. So in terms of how my team did, um, I, I remember yesterday in the live stream, someone said, "Why do I have? Why do I have Onana playing?" against Benfica. Well, he kept a clean sheet and he made some really good saves, got me six points. I was very, very happy with that. Um, and actually, Onana this season, that is six clean sheets for him in the Champions League. So, it looks like Inter Milan's defense in the Champions League is quite good. Or as I said in the in the live stream yesterday, AS Milan and Inter Milan always find a way to pack the bus in one of the legs. And um, AS Milan did it this time. They didn't pack the bus, but they kept a clean sheet. And same with Inter Milan's so six points for nine is what I got. That is um, absolutely beneficial. Um, Di Lorenzo and Rachmani, two points, one points. Di Lorenzo was quite lucky not to get a goal in that game. He had like very two very good shots inside the box and the goalkeeper saved. So unlucky not to get a goal. He also picked up a yellow card. He was arguing a lot. I was worried he'd get a red card. And Rachmani himself as well got into a fight um, right at the end of the game, got, got himself booked as well. So nothing to... to um, be happy about in terms of the Napoli defense. And actually, next leg is now going to be very, very interesting. Di Lorenzo and Rachmani, both on yellow cards. Um, and Kim today, Kim picked up a yellow card, which means he's going to miss next game. So there's no Kim um, in the next game. And also Angisa got a red card, so there's no def uh, defensive midfielder in that game as well. The likes of Dombele can still come on, but they, they will be missing two players, and we still don't know if Osman is going to be there. So that is something to watch for the next leg. If you had Kim, <laughs> uh, sorry if, um, for you, but uh, you will be suspended. That is a change you need to make. The Hernandez got me six points, just like Onana, Inter Milan, AC Milan. They loved keeping a clean sheet. And actually, for AC Milan, that is five clean sheets in a row in the Champions League. Yes, they, they've not considered a goal today. They didn't concede in both legs against Tottenham. And also in the last two games in the group stage, they did not concede a goal. So it's looking that they're like their defense in the Champions League is quite solid. You never know. We could get a Milan derby in the semi final. What a game that could be. And that would mean one of the Milan teams in the final. You never know. And um, Carvajal, as I said yesterday, Chelsea can never score a goal if you had two or three Real Madrid defenders. My pick yesterday was Carvajal. He got six points. Got a yellow card. Could have been seven because um, he got a recovery point, but that was um, that disappeared after he got a yellow card. Six points is not that bad, uh, but double up, triple up is not bad at all because Chelsea just don't score any goals at all. Um, in midfield, um, Joao Mario got two points. Um, Benfica disappointing yesterday, didn't really create that many chances. In the first half, Rafa Silva did have a couple of shots, but that was it. Kvashele as well, I think Esmulan dealt well with him, only got two points. Tonali got three points, I think he got a, a clean sheet uh, in the AC Milan game. And Vinicius, um, so today I was thinking about whether to captain Benzema or Vinicius. I ended up picking Benzema, I was very happy when Benzema scored first, but um, at the end of the day, Vinicius got 10 points plus man of the match, player of the match, so he's got getting 13 points. If he captured him, that is 26 points. So I, I chose the wrong one there. But uh, at least my captain still got a goal. I was worried about him blanking. So Vinicius, 13 points. They've not added it yet, but he's going to get 13 points. And then, as I said, Benzema got a goal, 14 points. Um, and obviously, two points for playing and everything. And then Haaland yesterday, nine points. I captained... Um, I think I captained Joe Murray yesterday. Haaland scored and assisted. Haaland is just a machine, as we always say. Um, always the best captain. Uh, I went for Joe Murray as a differential, but um, all good. At least I did have him in the team, at least. And um, on the bench, Kepa got three points. Uh, not the worst, but I didn't really need him because Anana kept a clean sheet. So my subs were... Murray was in the starting lineup, but he didn't come on as expected. Oh, he didn't play as expected, but I didn't really have any other transfer to make. So I didn't have any transfers to um, use. So 
we had to keep him in the, in the lineup. So Myers went out. I brought in Kvashele from the bench, an extra two points. Grimaldi went out. I brought in Di Lorenzo and uh, Rafa Silva went out. And I think I brought in Cavallo Salmon in the starting lineup. So at the end of the day, this is going to be 68 points. My target was 70. If I captained Vinicius instead of Benzema, I could have been there. If I captained Haaland yesterday instead of Mario, I could have been there. But I don't think it's the end of the world. Let me know how many points you have for this week. Um, now, next week is going to be very, very interesting. Um, as I said, Napoli are missing a couple of players against AC Milan. AC Milan beat Napoli 4-0 in the first in, um, in Syria a couple of weeks ago. You never know. AC Milan could just go there and get a nil-nil and go through. So that would be interesting. Um, Napoli, now that they're missing players, um, I think they have to go attacking next week. So if Osimhen is there... Could, could be a good option. Yesterday, I warned about having the likes of Raspadori because you never know if they're going to start. Dean start. Um, they went for they went for other players up front. They switched everything up. So uh, they're number seven. I've forgotten his name, but he started instead. Is it Almas or something? He started instead. So you have to be careful with Napoli. But next week, right away, Napoli being at home, expect them to attack. You, you are going to go for the likes of Fashina. Hopefully, Ostermin is back for them. AC Milan defensively, I don't think it's a bad idea to have a defender or two from them. Maybe even their goalkeeper, not a bad idea. In terms of Real Madrid, I think it's going to be more of the same. I can see them winning again 2-0 or 2-1 next week. Um, Chelsea, I would avoid their players totally. Um, in terms of Man City and Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich now have to attack. Now that um, Mane and Sunny got into a scaffold, not sure what is going to happen with that. Nabri looked poor yesterday up front. Are they going to bring back Mullen and start him up front? Let's wait and see. Now, next week, um, the games that were played on Wednesday are the games that are going to be played on Tuesday. So the likes of Real Madrid, Chelsea are the team you're going to uh, to be getting, and also Napoli and AC Milan. So that will be beneficial to get Napoli's team news. Um, so Man City, Bayern, I think that is over. I think Bayern will score a couple, but I think Manchester will score as well. It's going to be um, too much for Bayern there. If they turn that around, it's going to be a huge surprise. And then finally, Benfica and Milan. Benfica have to attack, but Inter Milan will probably just pack the bus. And that is going to easily be... Um, could easily be Inter Milan and AC Milan in the semi-final. That would be very interesting. I think there was one game that was um, changed. I think AC Milan was supposed to be... Well, they're supposed to be away in the first uh, at home in the first leg and then Benfica away in the second leg. I think that was switched because they they both, they both lay in the San Siro with Inter Milan, so that, that was switched. Um, it could have been better for Benfica, but second leg, I think it's going to be more of defensive work from Inter Milan, AC Milan, and those kind of teams. So, in total, 68 points. Um, the first transfer I'm thinking of making. I would be happy to keep Haaland. I would be happy to keep Benzema. Uh, Mares could be. He might start next week, but I don't think they have to attack that much next week. So Myers could be one transfer out there. Um, maybe one of the Napoli defenders to go out and maybe bring in another Inter Milan defender since they will be at home next week. That could be something to do as well. And then midfield, I will see what happens. It depends on the Osman is back and midfield, uh, what happens with the man's team midfield and everything. But um, I could end up bringing Osman as a striker as well. But 68 points is not that bad. Let me know how many you got. As of now, thank you for watching. I'll catch up with you guys on the next one.